Hello everyone, my name is Yogesh and today I will be recording lecture over complex queries interview question SQL Server 2016. Now this uh, lecture is a second part of the previous lecture which was just complex query interview question in SQL Server uh, that I recorded a long time ago. Now because of the new features we uh, came like into SQL 2012 and 2016 so I wanted to show you those. Also in this lecture we will be covering few interview questions which are practically interview questions you can relate to them because those are generally asked in interviews. Second these functions which features I will be telling you like new features which have came into 2012 and 2016 T-SQL which helps you to write a single line of query which can do a task of like 20 or 30 line of code which you have to customly design. So these things are very important and third one was one query I will show you uh, one question came into one written test that was for like they have given a query and they asked for optimizing. So I will show you uh, that one query uh, just uh, because only one query I am covering is because there will be a separate lecture for performance optimization but for now only one query I will be covering. So now before starting this uh, uh, lecture I will be telling you the first thing I will be covering this one and the database I am using is Northwind which you can find online but also I have added few new tables so I will be uploading this backup for this database as well along with my this SQL script so that you can use this database for your uh, you can say practice. Now. Uh, I will be starting with SQL 2012 and 2016 T-SQL features. So before starting that I want to uh, brush, up, brush up you uh, like regarding this over operator because there will be a lot of new things came with this over operator and I want you to be like fully aware of the concept. There may be people who already know but uh, just, just for brushing up I want you to show you like what this operator do. Now the basic, uh, the simplest function which is used with this operator is row number. Now the people who know the row number they can understand easily but if you don't know doesn't, uh, you don't have to worry. It is a simple function uh, provided by SQL Server. In this, uh, with this function you can generate sequence number with each record whatever the row is returned by the se uh, your select query. Now along with this row number you need to use, it is mandated to use this over operator and within the over operator you have to provide according to what order row number should come. Now as I am getting data from categories and product table, I am getting category name and the product name. So row number I am producing on the product ID because one category can have multiple products. So I want uh, this row number for each product instead of just uh, for the category. So and also uh, I want it to come as a product wise not as a category wise. So if I run this query it gives me a simple output. One is this row number column which is just a continuous sequence of number, second category name and the product name. Now this is a simple one use of this row number and over operator. Now there is one uh, requirement like you can see there are multiple categories like beverages, condiments, produce and so on, seafood. So what I want is I want to produce this row number but I want that row number to reset whenever a new category comes. Like for one category like there are 12 products it will give 1 to 12. For the next category when it start again it should reset the row number by 1. So let me show you this query output. Now here you can see for one category I have this 1 to 12 sequence. Whenever the new category start it reset again to 1. So here you can relate and there is one more column which is just a continuous number like a previous one. So how I am able to do that? I am using this row number function with this over operator. Order by product ID is same. Just one thing I added is partition by category ID. So whenever the new category ID will come it will reset the value again to the 1 so that it will like show you like there is a row number happening for each category like a partition are created for each category. So you can see how it happens is I just added one more extra thing within the over operator that is partition by category ID. So this is just to show you how uh, like partition by works. To add up one more example to it is like right now if you see this query output what is happening is we are getting this row number uh, for each category resetting to 1 but this is continuous row number. So here what I want is only one number to be assigned to the one category means for beverages it should be all 1, for condiment it should be all 2 and like this sequence number. So how I can do is I am using here dense rank function which is also like a row number function but it gives ranking. Ranking means for one value only one rank will be assigned. 
so for beverages only one will be assigned for other category one more number to be assigned that will be unique to it because ranking is uh, because for the same values only one number will be assigned so let me just show you the output so here you can see for beverages all uh, uh, like uh, category wise row number is one for next category again it uh, set to two then continuous for the confection again then dairy product set to four and so on and also this product wise row number is all automatically resetting whenever the new category is coming you can see so this was just an introduction to you like regarding row number and uh, dense rank function and partition by clause partition by operator within this over operator now now the main things come now before that this is a simple query here what I'm doing is I'm joining two table one is product and order details table and what I'm doing is I'm getting the product and the total quantities uh, total amount a m o u n t sorry uh, total amount of that product has been sold so if you see the output it is just simple this product has been sold for so many dollars so it is very simple to understand now what I want to uh, I will be using this query as a sub query so here you can see the same query I copy pasted and give a name uh, like allies as T and now what I'm doing is I'm using again some I'm saying product name total amount whatever the output of this query second I want to sum the total but here you can see there will be no group by because I am doing it on the T alas so now there will be no group by I am summing this total and I am saying over and order by product name uh, one column is there like the product name so uh, second column I already doing summation so what I am saying is sum the total amount and uh, like over uh, using over operator order by product name so what it will do is it will generate you a running total value now what is running total now for the first value it is the same but for the second value it add these two value for the third value it is adding all three values for the fourth value it is adding the all fourth value four values and for the fifth it is adding all the five values or you can say it is adding the fourth running total with the next value so kind of like fourth running total added to the next one is equal to the next uh, running total so this is how you can achieve the running total now the people who are in the reporting or in the or in any like uh, place where they have to present the data they know running total is very common thing uh, asked by the client because this is the cumulative value so this is how you can achieve by using sum operator or any aggregation operator and using operate uh, like over operator and giving the order by now the question is now I can see product is there total is there running total is there now there is also category so what I will do is with the categories what I did is I just added one category ID to the this one to the output you can see category ID is output uh, added to the same query and second I, what I'm doing is I'm joining it with the category table to get the category name so why I'm doing this is to get the running total value but it should reset whenever the new category is coming so here you can see running total values incrementing for this beverages the moment next category comes this is that is condiments the next category come it again reset to the initial value for the next category when confections comes so again you can see it is set to the this one so how it is working is it is same total same what I'm doing is I'm summing the total order by product name but partition by category ID so what I'm saying is whenever a new category comes also reset the your running total so it is very simple and you can see how this thing can be achieved by just single line of code and uh, I know the people who are from the reporting background they know how it is difficult how much difficult it is to set these running total again back to the initial value whenever the new category comes they can do on the reporting but from the query side it was very difficult previously so now this was all about this over operator now coming toward two new function that has that are lead and lag now what this lead and lag function do is for lead I can get the front uh, like you get the next row value or next or any uh, you can say upcoming row values and with the lag function I can get the previous row value so here what I'm doing is I'm getting the customer ID customer company then order date whenever the person uh, that customer placed the order also I'm getting the next order date when the next order is placed and when the previous order was placed so let me just show you the output
Now here, for the next order value, now you can see it is 8th month, 25th date, and for the next order is 10th month and 3rd date, and you can see in the next order value, I am able to get the next order. So here, uh, you can see for this one, after 3rd, there was next order on 13th, so I can see there is a 13th value. So this was the lead function. Now this is the lag function, so for the first record, there will be no previous value. So what it is doing is it is getting the uh, for the second record it is getting the first record value here and for the third uh, record it is getting the second record value. Now why this is required because uh, let me give you a simple example where this query implies suppose you have a customer base and your management asks you to get the customer who purchase who place the orders more frequently. Now how you will be able to justify like uh, to figure it out which customer play uh, like place order frequently by getting their order history and how you will compare is you will compare their current or like one order with the next order and see what is the difference uh, like between number of days difference between those two orders like one day two day or hundred days so you can with that no, uh, days difference you can figure it out like which customer is placing frequent order and which is uh, which are not so how it is working is I am saying same lead the get me the next order date over partition by why I am doing with this one is because if you see the output for this customer when I am getting so for the next order for this customer only I am getting when the new customer comes then I should get, get the next order for the new customer so I have to reset this again and again so wherever there is a reset there will be a partition by clause and so what I'm doing is partition by company name so whenever the new company name comes again start uh, you can say fetching from the new company instead of doing it from the old and order by order date so if I get my output so here you can see whenever so, so this is like sixth record so this was the sixth order of this customer so there is no next order so there will be null and for this one first order there will be no previous one so it is null so you can see for the next customer again the last value well, last order have next day order null and for the previous the previous day so that's why the partition by I used so here you can see and you can understand now this lead and lag you can uh, search it on Google uh, and do some more practice because just not the next row you can get like uh, like three rows leaving and getting the fifth row data and fourth row so that thing you can try and uh, figure it out but this is whenever if you have been asked in an interview or in a written test how you will uh, get the next order value and all so here these are the function which can help you now coming to the uh, further more things it is the same query which is I am using above so what I am doing is here I am calculating the day difference which I told you like getting the most frequent buyer now let us see what is the history so what I am doing is I am just uh, getting the date diff in the date difference between order date and the next order date which is these two and here I am able to get 39 and all so for this customer I can see this customer placed all the order within the 100 days but if I see the next customer he is placing like very rarely like after 324 days or uh, 112 days so this is not the frequent buyer but this is the potential frequent buyer because you can see the difference day difference is decreasing instead of just increasing for the next customer also you can see so here you can see the days difference is decreasing it means this customer is happy with you so if there is a customer whose days decrease uh, days are increasing then there is a problem you have to call the customer and ask like what is the problem and so on but the thing is these kind of report help and now because of this lead and lag function it's now very easy to get the values and all within the SQL server you don't have to go to uh, create SSRS report and all now after this uh, I want to brush you up with the basic concept of paging now if you are a dotnet developer or any developer you will be able to like relate to this one now in this uh, SQL server suppose you want to do a paging now what is paging is suppose on the UI there are like uh, uh, the person is showing data in the grid and in that grid it is showing 10 record at a time your table is having thousand or millions of records but it, can, it is showing only 10 records so on the first page the record will come from uh, like you can say row number 1 to 10 for the second page the record will come from 11 to 20 for the third page record will come from 21 row number to 30th row number so how you calculate is with these three variable uh, two variable I'm using is page number and page size and then start page and end page now page number which page number I want to get and the what is the page size so 
start pages like page number into page size that is like 10 into 3 30 minus the page size that is 10 so it becomes 20 plus 1 because this will be my first record 20 because of for the third page what is the first record 21 to 30th row number and for the end row it's directly page number into page size so this is here I am able to get these two values and here what I am doing is simply I am generating the row number 1 2 3 4 and outside I am adding a between clause between start and end I want to get the row so I am getting the third page so I will be getting 21 to 30 now why I am showing this one is because if you are a developer you will be already knew about this one like this logic but this logic was used previously now a new thing came is offset and fetch in SQL server if suppose you want to uh, skip first because uh, third page number as I told you it, it means 21 uh, row number to 30th row number means you are skipping first 20 so in this simple syntax what you have to say is you want offset 20 means you want to skip first 20 order by you have to give anyhow without that it won't work offset you are saying like I want to skip 20 rows and then I want to get 10 next 10 records so if I run this it is getting me the same output but the row number is not coming that you can anyhow generate now the thing is if I just see and compare the execution plan of these both queries you will be able to find out yes there is a difference this query old row number mechanism is quite expensive compared to the this offset and fetch one and if you see the rows other than this row number column you can see the data is matching so now for paging you don't need to write that uh, same again complex uh, you can say uh, like not even the complex but the traditional thing you should not use you can use this offset and fetch also I just made it dynamic here by doing the variable instead of just you directly writing 20 and 10 I am just replacing it with the formula so that you can see like you can make it dynamic as well let me just turn off this execution plan okay now there are like as uh, so many function I have showed you and I like over operator we can see we can use lead lag sum with this over operator then we have uh, this uh, offset and fetch thing now there are two more function that is first value and the last value now suppose uh, like the same example let me just show you first and then we'll discuss suppose you have a situation where you want to find the difference between the order date compared to the first order when the customer is placed or you went to uh, you can say uh, get the difference with the last record when was the last order placed with all the orders so you need the last and first value so how you will uh, you are able to get is there are two function new functions are there that is first value and the last value and the syntax is totally same partition by customer name and order by why you select one is like in whatever order they are in so you can use anything whatever you like as per your data so if I execute so what I'm getting first value of this group so the first order was placed on 825 so 825 all the rows and the last order was 49 so all the rows are 49 now for the next as I am partitioning by custom company name so for the first order is on 34 so all are 34 and the last order was on 918 so last order was 918 so like getting the last and first value along with the, all the records so you can use first and last value functions so as now you can see so many things are there uh, so this uh, query I just built to show you like as I told like recommendation I want to make so if the customer is like uh, what I'm doing is everything is same I am able to get lead and lag like diff, uh, or first and la next order then what I'm doing is I'm calculating the average uh, difference between two dates in here in this query and when I'm getting is I'm just giving them a number one two three four uh, one two three four why I am giving them uh, okay let me just show it to you so that it should make more sense star from CTE 2 so why I am giving is like I want to differentiate between like two means like normal or you can say frequent buyer or three means is good or something like that I want to give them so what I am doing is here I am calculating the date difference 
between the same what we were getting above and uh, as per the date difference like if the average date difference is 30 then uh, the give the tag 1 if it is 30 uh, then give the tag uh, greater than 30 give the tags 2 or something and between 90 give the 2 and greater than 90 give the 3 and so on so kind of that so this why I'm doing is later on I'm using this choose function which came in SQL Server 2016 uh, 2012 in this you just need to pass a number and the values array like the comma separated so if the value is coming 1 it will give important if value is coming 2 it will give recommended if value is coming 3 it will give normal and if it is 4 then ignore so let us see the output I know I have just taken a complex example to just denote the simple functions but uh, you can check it later as well but let me okay so you can see the output as per the flag I change the value so here this is a simple representation of this one there are two function one is IIF uh, if you are reporting user you already knew this function if you are not uh, so the, what this function is doing like a case clause like you have to do a case and all that you don't need now so you can do like if one equal to 2 then a else b so it is giving else now if I run it again so it will give me a now so it is directly case statement or also like you do the nested case you can do nested if here what I did if then if and then if but there is a one thing uh, it can go up to 35 level that's the same uh, you can say constraint apply to the case statement you cannot nest more than 35 level then there is a choose as I told you uh, this is a comma separated array of the values and here whatever the values you will pass in the first one like third row value you want to get so it gave you ghost if I say one it will give me error uh, sorry hello so here you can see so it is simple if you give something which is more than that it will give null so it's very simple now there is one more thing that is called as concat function came in sql 2012 and, uh, and same using in 2016 why i'm using is let me let me just make you show you show you example so here what i'm doing is i am declaring two variable var1 and var2 var1 has best and second has friend so here i am concatenating with plus operator and here I'm concatenating using concat operator, the uh, concat function with comma separated. So the output remains same. But if I make this one as null, and if I see the output again, so the first become null because adding best with space and then with null it becomes null. But concat is able to handle null properly. So now if you want to be get rid of any problem related to null coming and nullifying your output you can use concat and it is very good for concatenating the string now these are the complex queries now as I told you initially we will be covering few interview questions uh, anyhow these all these question I covered these are also interview question you can use in written test or something like that but these will uh, be the interview question which uh, I came across so now this is one simple question now in this what I have is I have one table called cities and basically I am adding countries so sorry for the miss uh, giving the wrong column names and all but the thing is suppose I have four teams and I want to set the match between all the four teams like India versus Australia India versus Sri Lanka and India versus England and so on so like if there are 10 teams and between them but what I want is I should not repeat it like India versus Australia happens then Australia versus India should not happen because it's already happened so how I will be able to do first I am got the data in this temporary table second what I am doing is I am joining the same table but not with the same ID what I am saying is I, because I have to do the cross join why cross join because I have to create a pair with India with all three Australia with other three Sri Lanka with other three so I have to do a cross join you can say uh, outer join outer uh, join so here I inserted that into the team so here if we see the team data here you will find all the combination Australia versus India also and India versus Australia also India versus Australia also so now this is like a raw data now we will filter it out means if Australia versus India happened so India versus Australia should not happen because it's already the same now how it works is if you see one thing for this record from ID is equal to so uh, like here Australia versus India and India versus Australia then these record happens so from ID is equal to 2 ID for this record and 2 ID for this record is from ID for the other record because 
these are like id to the countries so anyhow these represent these two record represent like from becomes to and to becomes from in when the uh, countries are same just the values are criss cross so what i have to do is i will be getting uh, joining this team with team where from id of as i told you from id this one equal to 2 id of the next record and 2 id of the current record to the from id of next record so i want to get that output but I want to get where from ID is less than 2 ID why this condition if I don't put this condition it won't ignore the other values where the values are same because again it gave India England and England India so to ignore that I added the condition I want to get the first record whatever is coming like uh, Australia versus India is coming so let it come so here you can see Australia versus India is there but there is no India versus Australia Sri Lanka versus India is there but there is no India versus Sri Lanka so kind of with this condition I am able to ignore the values which are like noise values which I don't need so when you will I will be sharing the script so you can just run line by line and see how it is working okay now coming to the one more question the second highest or nth highest salary let me make it nth highest so why this is very important is because this is the very common interview question very very common interview question you will find you have employee table or a student table or any table get the second highest salary or getting the student which have the second highest marks and all so how this works is suppose your company is having three salaries like sixty thousand 50,000 and 40,000 suppose this 60,000 there are 10 people for this one there are 14 employees in your company and for this one there are 16 employees company but there is one thing common what is the second highest value which has only having one salary greater than it I'm not talking about the people I'm talking about the salary what I'm saying is if I talk about third highest salary third highest salary will be the salary where there are above uh, there are two salaries more than that in the organization which are 50,000 60,000 so if I say first highest means there is zero uh, zero salary above this salary so it is always one less if it is first record there should be zero record above this one if it is second record there should be only one salary above it or if it is the third then there should be only two salary above it so that you can understand that is minus one third means there should be two two means there should be one and one means there should be zero so here in this query this n minus one denotes to that if it is two it should be one I, uh, like you can say above salary above it so how I'm doing is I'm having this employee table and creating the sub query joining outer employee with the inner employee where I am putting the condition inner employee salary is greater than outer employee salary and getting distinct count of the salary why distinct count because as I told you if there are 10 people so the thing is if I see like I will say uh, what are the number of salaries above 50,000 so it will give me the 10 record because there are 10 people if I do the distinct salary it will give me only one that's why I need uh, distinct clause here so here I'm saying calculate the count of salary which is above my salary if that count is like suppose I'm getting second as its count is equal to one means only one salary is greater than me then that is the person uh, you can say that is the salary greater than me so means I am the second highest salary so if there is any record which is having you can say uh, like uh, two salaries above me people who are having salaries but if I calculate distinct salary and getting two records which are above me means I am the third highest salary pair getting you can say getter so here I am able to get the second highest if I have to get the third highest sorry so I can get these are the people who are getting the third highest uh, you can say a third highest salary the 50,000 and if I do it one so I got the salary which are the maximum salary so just to clarify what I will do is I will just show it to you also there are only these salaries so the first is uh, wait a second 
order by salary descending so here you can see the first is 70,000 as our result came and the second is 60 and third is 50 so let us see first is 70 these many people are on the 70,000 salary on the 60,000 only one person is there and on the third there are so many so this is how you are able to get but why this example it is just not because it is very common but there was one more question it was asked they want second highest salary as per department now here the complexity comes now as I told you what this ranking function do for each value it will assign one number so suppose there are 10 people having 50,000 salary so it will assign them only one number as a rank if the per there are 10 20 people having 60,000 salary they will assign only one so suppose there are 70 60 50,000 so it will assign only three ranks all people with 70 will assign one all people with uh, 60 will assign two all people with 50 will assign B uh, you can say three so how I am doing is I am saying partition by department because for each uh, department I want to re-rank all the people and order it by salary because as I told you for each salary it will give a only unique rank with this what I am able to get is all the people and what are their ranks as per their salary second uh, out because now as I told you for the second highest now if you see the example now human resource has four people first three people are getting 70,000 so rank is one and the fourth person is having 30,000 so it is getting two rank now as I am partitioning by uh, partitioning it again by you can say department so for each department the rank will set again back to 1 2 3 now if you see this information service this has three people having 50 40 30 so all three are different so 1 2 3 is assigned for marketing uh, you can say production let us take so in production what is happening two people are on 77 uh, 70,000 so those got rank 1 two are in 50,000 got rank 2 and two uh, uh, other two are in 40 and 30 so 3 and 4 rank is given so you can see rank is doing our task so means the second higher salary will be where the rank is 2 simple okay as per department so I am partitioning by department so this is one of the simple question they asked now uh, there was one more thing like we have employee table now in the employee table there is a manager ID this is very common question in CT usually people use this like recursive CT creating like I want to get all the people who works under ma uh, manager ID 2 like there are three people directly and there are under those three people there are four people more so and so I want to get all the childs so it's very simple this is a recursive CT the first I am getting direct child to manager so I got this then I am giving the CT and in the union all I am joining employee with this CT itself so means if there are these three childs are of manager 2 like you can say employee of manager 2 so if they are manager of someone so this employee ID will be their manager ID so that is the basic simple thing I am doing what I am doing when I am joining this employee with this CTE here I am saying manager ID should be equal to the CTE employee ID okay because already these will become manager to some other person so this I am joining and this is just recursive CT it will automatically get you all the childs under who works directly or indirectly under manager ID 2 okay now getting the duplicate record this is very common question uh, but comes with a different different variation now in the employee table they want to say like there are some duplicate people like entries for the same people duplicate entry how you can just uh, like identify for same employee ID if uh, uh, two records are there for same employee ID means th that is duplicate because employee ID should be unique so what I'm doing is I'm generating the row number as it is whatever the sequence this select one means whatever the sequence just give me the same uh, sequence so I got one two three four generated now what I'm saying is get me all the records where the row count you can say row number count is greater than one where employee ID for inner CT is matching with the outer CT so I am matching the employee ID but the row count so suppose there is uh, like uh, okay let me just show you the output, uh, first example suppose employee ID 1 is passed so here 1 is passed means I want to get 
if I just oh sorry I have to make it one let me make it one and run this sub query simple sub query so it will give me okay it's because of CTO oh, sorry so if I uh, it won't run because it is connected CT so what I'm doing is for employee ID one it will pass one here so I am getting wherever there is one ID equal to like outer CT is equal to, I'm joining with inner CT so means suppose there are two records for one ID it will recover give me two row number count means there are two row number exist so if uh, there are like employee ID 2 for employee ID 2 suppose only one record exists so the total number of row number are only one so with this one I am able to get the duplicate records here you can see for employee ID 19 there are two row numbers so what I am saying is if the row count is you can say greater than one and something like that okay and now comes the PV8 one. PV8, there is see there is for this CT recursive there is a special lecture. Uh, I think it is like uh, a grandparent and child uh, relationship. I have a lecture. I will share the link in the description of this video. You can find there so that you can be clear with this CT and how this recursive CT works. Second. Uh, this PV8 also we have a separate lecture so as this was just an interview question so I just want to get uh, show you this one so it is just nothing I am getting uh, you can say department and year uh, in which year how many people joined now if you are aware with the PV8, PV8 what it does it can generate uh, you can say translate uh, you can say transform your data from row wise to column wise so what I am doing is I am generating column for each year and showing the amount, uh, like a uh, number of people joined in that. So here I can see in human resource in 2006, one person joined for 2008, two person joined and 2009, one person joined. So so on. So PBT is a simple one. So here you can see as uh, this is the query. So you can just look into it. Okay. Now there was one more interview question. It was asked was like there was a string given. They just asked like they want to get a number of correct uh, you can say uh, number of spaces within the string so how it happens is calculate the length of the string subtract the length of string after replacing space with nothing so it will give you the count of space within the string it's simple but there is one difference if there is a space like in the end so length function ignores that so for that you need to use data length function because length function it don't include the you can say uh, post uh, like string spaces and all so data length give you proper example now this was uh, now this is the one which I was talking about this is a simple query what here the person is doing is he is selecting the students and getting the date of birth e date uh, year when the student was born and getting the maximum date from the table student for that year when this uh, in the DOB section so suppose you are uh, like the uh, the person born in 1991 so this sub query will give me when was the last child born in the 19 uh, like 1991 so the record for the last child will be returned so this is one query I will show you how bad it works it takes around one and a half minutes to just give you the output let us just wait for a minute sorry okay in the meantime it executes uh, I let us cover what we covered was we covered over operator with row number and dense rank function also then we did running totals uh, here using over with sum which comes after in 2012 to uh, SQL 2012 and uh, still working in 2016 then we use the partition by for each category we again reset the running total then we use the lead and lag function with this over operator so everything is related to over operator in SQL 2012 and 2016 but there are a lot of functions related to uh, formatting and date time operations but those are not uh, you can say logical ones like using as per the logic those are like value oriented single value given uh, giving per functions and all so that's why I just covered over operator then we use lead and lag to calculate the difference between the uh, next order for the place by the customer then we did paging uh, with the normal uh, way and then second we did with offset and fetch then also we used first and uh, last uh, you can say first value and last value functions to get the first value of the last value uh, order placed by the customer uh, partition by customer 
and then we just g use the, this one if if and choose and I showed you how the concat works in SQL 29 we uh, created this complex query interview question for this creating match uh, with all the countries with each other without repeating uh, vice versa uh, scenario then n as higher salary then getting the second higher salary as per the department you can say department by second higher salary then getting the all the uh, person directly or indirectly working under manager 2 using recursive CTE as I told so and then was finding the duplicate rows and then this pivot query I showed it to you pivot is simple so you can look into my other lecture to understand how this pivot works then calculating the space using length and data length so as I told you uh, length function ignores the uh, you can say uh, at last uh, spaces and also data length you need to use because you if you are calculating length of a password you need to use data length you cannot ignore because space is also calculated as a character now coming to back to this optimization of this query now this query took around 1 minute 11 uh, second give 384 records now what is really happening in this query is getting the student getting its year and getting the last uh, date of birth when the person was born in that year so means for all the student it will pass the year and will get the last date of birth for that year means if there are 100 student of same year they, it will get the 100 times the last date of, uh, date of birth for that year ok so how we can simplify is as I just need year and the last date of birth in that year so I use CT so first I got the query year and the last date of birth and then I just joined the CT with student on the base of date of birth and if I execute the same output can be get in 0 second almost 0 second and 384 records the same data so this is how I, I just optimize this query so this was one of the interview question and I found it interesting to include in this lecture so I hope I have cleared you all the things but if you still have any confusion you can contact me through my email ID uh, that is yogesh.mail at the gmail using my skype id and uh, i will be uploading script and the database back up on my website that is textfire.in and my youtube channel is uh, textfire you can subscribe to it for the latest and any new lecture upcoming so also you can contact me on my phone and that is plus nine one nine zero two three two six Sorry, two six two five two zero. So you can contact me through my uh, phone also. Uh, I'm also online on WhatsApp, so you can contact me through this number. Uh, I hope you learn like you like the lecture. If there is anything, I know I'm little bit fast, but I will be uploading the script and the database backup, so you can execute line by line. If you have any question, as I told you, you can contact me anytime. So stay healthy, keep learning. Thank you.